What you doing? You just want some love. You just want some love. I know how it is. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video where I wanted to talk to you a little bit about new expensive skincare that I'm a little bit curious about. So this little guy is in my lap right now because I think he's gonna bark a lot because the neighbors are outside right now. So he's gonna just chill in my lap. The other one is in his crate. Um, so they're just gonna, oh, he got up. Okay, you sit right there. Now I just literally just made a video about how I'm only going to spend $500 on skincare this year um, and I've already spent $100 of that $500 meaning I have only $400 left and obviously the products I'm about to talk about are pretty expensive so I'm probably not going to be buying these but I wanted to get out my excitement for these products in a video because if I can't buy it I might as well talk about it. So the first product that I am very curious about is a Drunk Elephant product and Drunk Elephant is a pretty interesting controversial skincare brand. They've had a little bit of PR messiness in the past. They haven't handled customer complaints very well. Um, it's There are plenty of videos about it on YouTube if you want to learn more about that said drunk elephant. But from a formulaic standpoint, from a formulation, that's the word I'm looking for, formulation. From a formulation standpoint, their products can be really, really elegant. So their new product is called the F-Bomb because it has vitamin F and it's like a bomb, but it's like F-Bomb, like the bad word. So when I looked at the ingredients, I was like, wow, these are kind of incredible. Um, so just to quickly run through the ingredients that I think make this product really special, um, there's squalene, niacinamide, coconut alkanes, coconut water, jojoba seed oil, sodium PCA, um, cholesterol, ceramides, a ton of ceramides, ferulic acid, um, sodium hyaluronate, adenosine, and that's just to name a few ingredients. This ingredients list is quite extensive and in my opinion like all of the ingredients in here serve a very important purpose for the skin and for the formulation of the product. So from an ingredient standpoint I'm very very impressed by this product. Um, it makes me really want to buy it because the ingredients in it look so good but it's like 60 something dollars and I, I just I can't justify spending that much money on a moisturizer right now when I have four moisturizers in rotation right now so probably not gonna be buying this anytime soon but I wanted to talk about it here on my channel because I wanted to run through the ingredients that I think make this product really special um, one by one so like all the ingredients I just named I'm gonna very briefly talk about each one and the benefits for the skin so just in general though this is not an oil free moisturizer which I really like um, I find that most gel based moisturizers like that don't have oil so like an oil free formulation tend to be not enough for my skin. I do have normal to dry skin which means that my skin is lacking in oil and it also can be dehydrated meaning that it lacks water content. So a lot of the times um, when I have like an oil free moisturizer it feels really nice when I put it on initially but it just kind of like disappears into the skin like poof it's gone. I have found in the past that moisturizers with oil in them work best for me because the oil really seals in a lot of hydration and adds oil content to my dry skin. So okay the second ingredient in this product is squalane and that's after water and squalane is like a gorgeous oil that's well tolerated by a lot of different skin types. So the next one that I really like is niacinamide and niacinamide truly is like the little Swiss army knife of skincare. It truly does everything. It reduces hyperpigmentation. It's an antioxidant. It reduces, uh, did I already say hyperpigmentation? It also reduces fine lines and wrinkles. Um, it boosts ceramide production which means that it's going to help the skin barrier health. So it does a lot for the skin. Niacinamide is one of my absolute favorite ingredients of all time. Oh and it also regulates the production so if you have crazy oily skin that's really hard to manage niacinamide can really help to control sebum production there are just so many hydrating ingredients in this product which i really really like um like sodium hyaluronate also has adenosine which is a naturally occurring amino acid in the skin it has cholesterol and a ton of different ceramides to help um, replete the skin barrier so the skin barrier is composed of these ingredients and so when you add them to the skin barrier it can really help the skin barrier repair itself and get a lot stronger honestly there's not a single ingredient in here that i don't like like i'm looking at the ingredients list right now on my laptop and there's not a single ingredient in here that I'm like, oh, why do they put it in there? Like, all, I think all of them serve a really, really critical purpose 
for the formulation of the skincare product. Now, that's not to say that this product is going to be incredible. You don't know that because ingredients only tell half the story. The other half is formulation. And so you can really only tell how a product performs when you put it on your skin. So like in order to really give you a review of the Drunk Elephant F-Bomb, I would need to actually buy it and try it for myself. And it's interesting because a lot of reviews on Sephora say that um, this particular product left their skin feeling dry in the morning. And that's obviously something that I don't want to have on my skin. I don't want like, that like dry parched feeling on my skin in the morning. So honestly, like even the ingredients are really, really amazing. Um, the fact that there are reviews saying that this product left their skin feeling dry in the morning it makes me have a little question mark. Like, I don't know where they went wrong, but I think that's a really interesting discussion to be had if eventually I use up the four moisturizers that I have and I purchase this product to test out. But honestly, I think more realistically, the product that I would test out is the Laneige Sika Sleeping Mask. Now, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. I've ranted and raved about it for such a long time now. Sika is a really fantastic um, skincare ingredient of Asian origin. And what it does, it's a really potent antioxidant at a very, very low concentration. So you don't need a whole lot of it. So in this particular product, they have Asiatic acid and Matacasic acid. Yes, Matacasic acid. Both of these ingredients are the Sika component to the sleeping mask. Like I said, you only need a very small concentration of Sika in it to have a big result on the skin. And so when I look at the ingredients list, um, and I might put it on the screen right now for you to see, it doesn't blow me away like the Drunk Elephant F-Bomb does, but the inclusion of the Asiatic Acid and the Matacasic Acid makes me really interested in this product because Sika is something that I haven't really tried a whole lot um, in my skincare lifetime, and so I, I think it's pretty interesting because the research is there that it's really, really great for the skin. I just personally have not tried it, or at least I don't think I've tried it. I might, I might have tried it in the past. Actually, no, that's not true. Right now I'm testing out the Primera Sika Essence Bean. It's called something weird with the word bean in it, but I talked about it in my Korean skincare haul. I will link that video down below, but I went to Seoul, South Korea last year and I did a huge skincare haul for all Korean skincare. So if you're interested in seeing what I bought, I will link that video down below in the info box for you to go watch. But I, I did buy a Sika product or I got given a sample of a Sika product and I've been using it and I actually really love it. And then one more thing about the Laneige sleeping mask with Sika is that it's only $34 which compared to the Drunk Elephant F-Bomb, which is 60 something dollars, $34 is not a super terrible price tag. So that's why I say it's a little bit more realistic that I'll be purchasing the Laneige Sika Sleeping Mask before I do the Drunk Elephant one, just because this one is a lot more affordable. Okay, the next and last product I wanted to talk about is the Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. Now, I love my vegan milks. I'm a coconut milk, almond milk, oat milk kind of gal. So right off the bat, I see that when I look at the ingredients list, there are a ton of really yummy emollient ingredients and oils to moisturize the skin. And I really like that because I do have dry skin for the most part, especially in this like really cold, not really cold. It's like 50 degrees outside, but for me, that's pretty cold. So it's fragrance free, which I also really like. Um, and what's interesting is that based on the ingredients list, I can't really tell what the texture of it will be like. It could be, you know, quite um, lightweight. It could also be quite rich and thick. And so it's described as a rich cream, which piqued my interest because I have dry skin. I love really rich, thick, emollient, creamy sort of formulations. And also reviews of the product say that it's really, really thick. So this is something really interesting to me. And then also I don't see any crazy irritants in here. The ingredients list is pretty long and I haven't done like a real deep dive into like all the ingredients, but from first cursory glance, I don't see any crazy standout irritants that will definitely irritate my skin. I think it looks pretty okay. So I'm pretty curious about the vegan milk moisturizer. I think it could be really, really nice. I think milk makeup is a very not talked about brand. A lot of people don't talk about their makeup or skincare. Um, and I've been a little bit curious about their skincare because I know they have like those like stick cleansers, which I think 
or a great idea in theory, but in practicality, pretty unhygienic. But anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. But yeah, Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. I don't think it's that expensive either. So maybe the Sika Sleeping Mask or the Vegan Milk one, I will test out. But if you want me to test any of these when I'm done with my four moisturizers that I'm currently using, and guys, one of them is like a really big like tub of moisturizer from Primera. So it might take a while for me to finish that product. But when I'm done with all those moisturizers, if any of these three you want me to review and buy and give you my thoughts on, like my real thoughts on, not just the ingredient valuation, then comment down below with which product you want me to talk about and I will consider it. I am really trying hard to be more financially responsible, especially with these big changes coming up in my life. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of taking a step back, using up what I have, paying attention to how expensive things actually are with skincare. There comes a limit to where no matter how much money you throw at your skin, your skin's not gonna change that much. And I think I've reached that um, level that no matter how much more money I pour into my skincare, my skin is not gonna change that much, like not that much of a noticeable amount. So it's in my best interest to just keep it simple, keep using what I know my skin loves, and just scale back, you know, just like scale back all the excess. So anyway, those are three expensive products that I'm very curious about. Like I said, if you want me to review any of them, then comment down below which one you want me to review. And if you have tried any of these three, let me know what you think about them. Are my predictions about each product true? So yeah, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending this time with me. Have a beautiful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.